the works in this exhibition um, spanned um, the last decade, the oldest work uh, being from 2010. I also have um, three new commissions uh, for the power plant, which uh, opened in, in this exhibition for the first time. I've been doing performance since my teens. So a big shift in, in this past decade was um, to, to look at other ways that I can perform. Uh, let's say using live musicians or using dance and costume, but also the idea of performance for film or the performance for camera, prioritizing that instead of the performance as a live thing that is ephemeral. I've been always been doing sculpture, um, but it never felt as strong as the performance um, practice. Uh, but I did a residency in 2011 at Schloss Solitude in Stuttgart. I had a budget and time to uh, really play with sculpture. And more recently, I've been playing with these kind of frames, which uh, house a lot of smaller sculptures. The frames are called kakashte. Kakashte itself is a glyph, and it's a word that, that means caring. So what do you carry? In the 20th century, the kakashte became a symbol of oppression within leftist rhetoric. But if you, if you look at it in a more expanded way, there's also images of um, First Nations people in the 18th century in Canada carrying their childs in tunpipe, which is a form of kakashte. So, you know, it, it is something that's more general and not something that is always linked with oppression. But of course, uh, what you carry can can be a positive thing and it can also be a negative thing. So, so I'm interested in both aspects of the kakashte. And within the kakashte I made here for power plant, I wanted to make a kakashte with objects that reminded me of the biography of my grandmother, whom I came with to Canada. And the kakashte can also be performed, that it can be carried. So for the opening performance of my exhibition, I will just unravel the objects in the kakashte. Within the exhibition, you'll find a group of costumes based on a few uh, etchings I made that speak about this 1975 play that was heavily censored. It is called uh, Corazón de los Pantapájaros. It's a play that was written in 1962 by Hugo Carrillo. But in 1975, uh, students from the Universidad Popular adapted the play. So they, um, you know, they totally discarded the script and, and they just took uh, essential elements of it. The play um, became very, very popular in Guatemala City when it opened. It made the government look at it and it, it's the most violent instance of censorship within the whole 36-year uh, war. This project was totally a, a way that I, myself and also my collaborator, Winston Gonzalez, who's a poet, could uh, totally like project our own things into it. What we, me and Winston did was more about what it's like to live in a fascist uh, world. And um, you could say is more prevalent now with the rise of the new right uh, in Europe and in the Americas. A few years ago, I, I was in a residency in Weimar in Germany, and it was the wor worst winter in 300 years. So I had a lot of time on my hands, and I watched lots of YouTube videos. And I became very interested in um, this reptilian conspiracy that the world is run by an um, elite group of humanoid reptilians. Two works in ex exhibition come from this time. Uh, one is a God's Reptilian Finger, which is an ins installation that makes strong use of UV lights. And then an another work is uh, a series of uh, works on panel, which use this nickname in mathematics, reptiles. 
And so it's basically um, tile patterns that, if repeated enough, remind people of uh, reptile skin. And these works are painted over with minerals or materials that um, have had high economic value, which is obsidian and jade. And the other two are gold and silver, but also play with um, my interest in economics and power and how money and value play out historically and, and well, even now.